Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on uh, where you're joining us in the world today. Thank you for being with us to talk about the topic of leveraging AI ops for cloud cost optimization. Uh, before we be begin, just one uh, brief housekeeping item. Uh, you should see a chat option available uh, in your browser window. If you have any questions today during the webinar, please feel free to drop them into chat. It is a private chat, so the question will just go to the Prosper Ops team, and uh, we'll either reply to you in chat, or uh, if the question is suitable for the entire audience, uh, I may verbally uh, address it just so it's part of the webinar. So with that, let's go ahead and, uh, and jump right into our webinar today. Uh, quickly, just a little bit about me and who I am. It's great to be with you today. My name is Eric Carlin. I'm the co-founder and chief product officer at Prosper Ops. Uh, we started the company uh, back in 2018, so we're approaching our three-year anniversary. And our mission of Prosper Ops is what we call autonomous cost optimization, that is, uh, leveraging uh, AI ops, algorithm, and automation to achieve um, outsized optimization outcomes uh, for our customers. And today we're currently managing over $300 million of AWS compute uh, with our platform. And so great scale there, uh, good outcomes, and we're going to talk about um, some of those today. Uh, before that, I was vice president uh, at Rackspace, and I led our product and engineering teams uh, to, to build uh, the and launch the uh, AWS managed service business at Rackspace. Uh, and we grew that into a, a Gartner Magic Quadrant leader. So through that experience, uh, you know, lots of uh, uh, time uh, helping hundreds and thousands of customers with their AWS uh, use, uh, their cost optimization activities. And it was through that experience that we really uh, saw the need for AI ops and the power of AI ops for cost optimization. So with that, let's move on to uh, that topic itself. And so if you think about cloud cost optimization, uh, it's, it's a very broad set of activities that exist. And we categorize those activities into one of two buckets. We think about them as parallel universes uh, in the cloud. On one side, you have what we call engineering optimization which is activities like right-sizing instances, implementing auto-scaling or scheduling, uh, taking advantage of spot, uh, et cetera. And these activities uh, generally involve um, the in engineering resources themselves. And so your engineering team is likely uh, manipulating them. They have impact to your application, right? Spot is suitable if your workload can be interruptible. And so we are huge proponents of engineering optimization, and there's lots of great things to do there. Uh, but those things generally uh, are done by an engineering team and are done uh, in a way that um, is consistent with uh, your application needs. There's a, another parallel universe in the cloud, uh, which we call financial optimization. And this is a world of um, various resources like convertible RIs, standard RIs, compute savings plans, EC2 instance savings plans. And these are commit discount instruments that can be deployed in a way to optimize the rates that you pay in the cloud. And um, the goal is to deploy and manage the financial universe in a way that maximizes your dynamic and changing use uh, on the left-hand side, the, the engineering universe. And because you may be doing right-sizing, you may be doing auto-scaling, you may be shifting workloads to spot, that creates a challenge to keep the right-hand universe, the financial universe, in sync and optimized with a dynamic and changing engineering universe. And so this is where, you know, when we were at Rackspace, we attempted to do this for customers with reports, and tooling and, and great tools that are built to do that. But ultimately, uh, we came to believe that this problem is best addressed by um, algorithms, automation, uh, real-time systems that are watching that universe and manipulating resources uh, in the right-hand side in very advanced ways to deliver um, you know, optimal savings outcomes. So if we think about 
you know, a traditional um, business or enterprise, you know, trying to do this uh, in a in a uh, in a traditional way, you know, there, there's a variety of things that present challenges, even for the most sophisticated customers. One is uh, infrastructure volatility. And so, you know, the cloud is dynamic. Your usage is changing. When you leverage these instruments, you're making commitments to AWS for a full 12 or 36 months. And so generally any sort of volatility, optimization activities, um, you know, future business condition changes all have to be factored into a capacity planning exercise to make um, uh, efficient commitments that will drive discounts. And that volatility creates a lot of challenges. Secondly, just the complexity of this universe, right? You've got all these different instruments, you've got uh, different prepayment types, uh, you've got you know, pros and cons of, of different instruments. And so how do you best leverage them and blend them together in a portfolio that will uh, bring to bear the, the most savings with the least amount of risk for your particular scenario? And so there's a lot of complexity in how to, how to make those decisions. And then lastly, these are commit discount instruments. And so in order to generate the discount, you have to make a commitment. And often there's commitment risk. And so if you end up making a commitment and your usage patterns change over the term of that commitment, um, you can very easily end up in an overcommitted scenario where you're now paying the cloud provider for uh, a commitment that you're no longer deriving uh, benefit from. And we've seen scenarios where customers um, have gotten upside down in certain cases to where it's actually costing them more to leverage these instruments uh, than if they had just not deployed them at all. So it is possible to do that. And locking in for one or three years um, is a risk that makes it difficult to really uh, generate optimal outcomes. And so we find that most companies other, e either underutilize or um, sort of misutilize or suboptimize these instruments. And in doing so, they're leaving material savings on the table. And let me visually show you uh, what that looks like mechanically. And so uh, in these two graphs, you're seeing two scenarios. And these are, these are effectively the bookends of the spectrum that we see uh, with, with prospects. Um, one is you've got the, uh, the purple line there represents your compute usage. And you can see in the left scenario, it's generally trending up into the right. And uh, traditional methods would say to periodically deploy full term commitments, you know, either some sort of RI or some sort of savings plan. And you're generally stacking them uh, in a way that is generally corresponding with your, your usage growth and your predicted usage, et cetera. Often what people do is they will uh, leave some amount of buffer above and beyond their commitments to their usage that will run on demand. And that allows them to be able to absorb declines in their usage. And so it's a conservative commitment. Different customers have different thresholds, but their a risk is being managed by effectively leaving savings on the table and running um, a certain amount of your usage as on demand and receiving no discounts. The other bookend is an aggressive commitment strategy where we see customers do that, but they're, they're uh, leaving a little to no um, buffer because they want to maximize their savings. And what happens then is if you have any sort of downturn in your usage, uh, again, be it optimization activities, business conditions change, um, what have you, uh, you can end up with a scenario there that I described where you can be overcommitted and you're wasting your spend at that point. You are, you've made commitments to AWS for which you're um, receiving no discount. That then is a headwind to your savings and reduces your savings outcome. So um, this is a continuum. Customers live on different places in the continuum, but generally what we see is either strategy is going to lead to a suboptimal savings outcome. And so the question is, how can AI ops be brought to bear on this problem to um, generate an optimal savings outcome? And that's basically where a service like Prosper Ops comes in. So the way that our service works is we have a very opinionated strategy about which types of instruments can be deployed to one, generate the highest savings outcomes consistently 
but two, to de-risk you from overcommitment and to enable a usage, a, a commitment pattern that closely mirrors and follows your actual usage pattern. And so we do that by deploying what we call a base layer of compute savings plans. And on top of that, we layer on um, a set of convertible RIs that we call the flex layer. And our algorithms and our automation unlock uh, a variety of advanced capabilities with convertible RIs that allow us to basically manipulate the commitment uh, in ways where we can, we can grow it and we can reduce it uh, to be able to very, very closely follow your usage patterns. And so our service uh, watches your usage patterns in real time. It's leveraging um, algorithms to uh, understand that usage pattern, detect cyclical usage patterns, figure out uh, the optimal set of uh, commitments that will generate the highest discount, and then manipulate them in near real time to perfectly optimize uh, your coverage. And so you can see here, as usage goes up, your financial universe of commitments follows very, very closely. If your usage goes down, our service can actually uh, squash or decrease your commitments uh, to keep you from being in an overcommitted state. So in either scenario, your, your financial universe perfectly mirrors your engineering universe. And this is basically um, how you maximize your commitment. So if you're familiar with the Amazon concepts, um, our service generally delivers a above 99% utilization rate with an above 95% coverage rate consistently month after month after month. Also driving your effective discount rate um, into the, the highest tiers. And um, the great thing about um, working in the, the cost optimization space is that all of this is quantifiable. And so there's lots of um, claims that can be made uh, about the effectiveness of one strategy or another. Well, the great thing about the space is we can just measure that. Uh, and although it can be measured, it turns out there, uh, when we started, there was actually no industry standard KPI to measure the efficacy or the effectiveness of your savings strategy, your financial universe savings strategy. And because we're a service that delivers outcomes, we are not a reporting tool, um, our algorithms will, will assume active management of your commitments and deliver these outcomes. We needed a way to measure and assess uh, the effectiveness of various strategies. And so uh, from that need came a metric we call the effective savings rate. And this metric, you can think of it just like in financial investing, you may, might make an investment and you're looking to understand the return on that investment. I, I made a certain decision. How did that decision pan out? What was my return on that investment? Well. ESR is basically the ROI for cloud. It allows you to say, uh, with all of the decisions I've made, with the different types of instruments I can deploy, uh, with the different terms of commitments that I can make, uh, with the different prepayments that I might make, with the different services that are being covered, whether it's Lambda or Fargate or EC2 or whatever, uh, with the various regions and, and instance types and discounts that are associated with all of those things, with the utilization rate that I'm achieving, with the coverage that I have at the end of the day, when all is said and done, what is my effective savings rate? What am I achieving um, as a savings off the on-demand rate? And that's what effective savings rate measures. Um, this is a metric that we have submitted to the FinOps Foundation uh, for inclusion as part of their uh, framework uh, as a standard KPI that uh, everyone should measure. And so there's growing interest and popularity in this KPI. Our algorithms and our service um, optimize for effective savings rates. So uh, uh, our service is always looking to make this value as high as possible. And what this particular chart is showing you here is data, benchmarking data that our service has collected um, you know, over the, the, the multiple years that we've been doing this. And what you see here is on the x-axis is um, usage values in increments of $100,000 from 100 up to 600,000. These are monthly numbers. Uh, we've measured this uh, up into the millions of dollars a month, but for purposes of making a, the chart readable, we've truncated it at 600,000. 
And on the Y axis, you're seeing the effective savings rate uh, that traditional non AI ops enabled um, customers have achieved. And so, um, and all of the, the scatter plots there in blue were basically, uh, you know, where customers of various sizes kind of end up in terms of the effective savings rate they achieve. And you can see the bottom left there, uh, that red circle is actually where you have a negative, where you can have negative effective savings rates. These are customers uh, that I mentioned where the use of the, these instruments can actually cause a loss. And generally those are smaller customers. You can see that there uh, given their, their position on the X axis, but that scenario can happen. You then see a number of customers uh, up into you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, even one customer up to almost $500,000 a month that basically make no use of these discount instruments at all. And so they've generated no savings. And then you see the majority of people in yellow that are achieving um, you know, generally um, you know, uh, a average to sort of above average commitments, but still sort of suboptimal relative to what is possible. And this is where the vast majority of, of customers live and they're achieving um, discounts anywhere from say 10 to uh, maybe 30% uh, effective savings rates of between 10 and 30%. Um, the percentile numbers are listed there. So you can see if you're achieving a 25% a effective savings rate, you're in the 80th percentile, uh, you know, me meaning you're, you are, uh, you know, 80% of other peers in the industry are achieving lower effect effective savings rates. But, you know, what we want to talk about today is how do we leverage AI ops to not just achieve you know, 80 percentile outcomes, but, you know, 98th or 99th percentile outcomes. And so if you look at the data, uh, 98th percentile ESR outcomes are uh, getting above 40 percent. Um, and so you can see there 40.5 percent is a 98th percentile outcome. And so what what AI ops can do is it can take any customer, uh, given whatever portfolio they have deployed today of commitments, given whatever effective savings rate is being achieved today, and it can take uh, the savings in that environment and it, and it can uh, move it from whatever the current percentile is up to the 98th or the 99th percentile. It can get the effective savings rate um, above 40%. And so ESR is a very, very powerful metric to understand the efficacy uh, of various approaches. And the data shows that uh, AI ops approaches uh, will exceed the traditional non AI ops methods. And so um, Prosper Ops is one such service. And so our value proposition is effectively being able to do three things on your behalf. One is maximize your savings. We wanna take your effective savings rate um, as high as possible. And what that means for our customers is that um, whenever the effective savings rate increases, um, we are putting money back into your cloud budget. So the savings that are generated more than offset um, our saving share charge and the differential is money back into your budget. So we are a, a vendor that will not consume budget, but will put money back in your budget. Secondly, we minimize commitment risk. Um, this is a function of our service being able to unlock those power uh, advanced sort of power user features of convertible RIs that will get your commitments into a flexible, short rolling um, set of commitments versus having fixed long-term commitments uh, by leveraging off the shelf commitments from AWS. And so by doing that, we can minimize the risk of these, which is in many ways equally or sometimes more important uh, than the savings. Uh, and then lastly, and this is, uh, again, a benefit of AI ops is that uh, this, th there's algorithms and a service that are uh, delivering these outcomes. Uh, th th it's not reports that you then uh, have to act on and continually uh, run and manage and take action on. Uh, it's a service and a set of algorithms and a set of automation that is acting on your behalf 24, 7, 365, monitoring things in real time and uh, delivering the outcomes automatically. Okay, let's make this real and uh, talk about uh, how this might play out uh, 
in an actual customer scenario. And so, uh, by the way, uh, the way that our service works is the first step in any engagement is to run a uh, free, no obligation compute savings analysis. Uh, a lot of the data you're gonna see in here uh, is derived from, uh, from that analysis. And so uh, this was a, a customer that was a B2B SaaS, um, you know, growing pretty rapidly, um, but that you can see here, they, they had sort of a, their spend is kind of up and down. What this particular graph shows is their compute spend over the trailing 12 months broken down by the various spend types. And so the red is on demand. The green is their use of spot, which is great to see. Their yellow is um, use of savings plans. And then it's very difficult to see, but there's a very thin layer of Lambda on top as well. And so you can see how their, their use breaks down over time. Um, and you can see overall their spend was sort of up and then down and then back up. So there's volatility uh, in, their, in their usage patterns. So that's interesting data, but let's sort of reframe it in a way that's a bit more uh, useful. And so uh, one of the things our service does is it will go and it will look at all of your usage and uh, we want to get it to a baseline that we can sort of compare against. And the way we do that is we take all of your spend and we unwind your use of um, any sort of commit discount instruments uh, and we put everything back to a normalized 30 day month on demand equivalent value and we call that um, your usage. And so the purple bars here represent the actual usage of the customer independent of their use of instruments to generate incremental savings. And then on top of that, we overlay um, two values. Um, the first is that red line there, which represents the amount of the commitment that they have deployed with commit discount instruments. And you can see there uh, a step up to savings plans that they deployed in the July uh, 2020 timeframe. And then uh, underneath that, you can see it's, it's gray shaded. There's a gray uh, line and usage uh, area that represents the efficacy of that commitment. In other words, how much of it was actually utilized and generating a discount. And in this case, the customer had um, perfect utilization, which is great. And so of the commitments that they deployed in red, 100% of them were utilized in generating a, a discount. But notice this particular customer um, in the month of February was only 27% um, covered. And so um, this is because of their volatile usage patterns. You can see how their usage dropped from uh, September down to January quite substantially. It went up again in February, but it, you know, uh, they, they envisioned a potential drop again. And so they, they didn't feel comfortable using traditional methods of deploying commitment any greater than um, what was 27% of their February usage. If we took that as a percent in January, it might be more like, uh, might be more like 40% or some higher percentage. And so uh, this is that scenario of a conservative customer that's hedging a bit because of the volatility in their usage and they're leaving savings on the table. So how might AI ops unlock um, additional savings for this customer? Uh, actually, before we get to that, one additional view of the data, which is uh, this represents their, their usage and their coverage. How did that translate to in terms of actual savings? And then again, effective savings rate, because that's really what we want to optimize for. And you can see here the dark green lines represent the dollars are the savings generated from RIs, which trailed off. And then the light green bars represent the savings generated from savings plans, which you can see is uh, much higher. Uh, but again, uh, you can see the, the savings kind of varies, uh, you know, month, month over month. Uh, but the, the actual savings rate is a function of the savings relative to the usage that they've deployed. And the purple line that you see there is the effective savings rate. You can see it kind of jumping around. It's, it's not um, consistent each month. And you can see that it's fluctuating. If we look at kind of the post savings plan world, it's fluctuating roughly around 10% kind of plus or minus. So the trailing 90 day effective savings rate was exactly 10%, which again, if we benchmark that, 
puts them in roughly the 59th percentile. So um, generally kind of right, right in the, the sweet spot of, of what we see with a lot of uh, customers that are not, not leveraging our service. And so the question is savings of about 54K a month, 10% effective savings rate. You know, what can AIOps do to sort of improve this scenario given the volatility and the risk tolerance of this particular customer? And so uh, what our service can do is it can take and again, deploy term optimized, low risk, um, flexible convertible RIs on top of the, the base layer of compute savings plans that this customer has already deployed. And so what this graph here is showing is a projected view of their future savings if our um, algorithms and AI ops approach was um, applied to their environment. And the three gray bars that you see there were the last three months of savings that they achieved with their existing strategy. And then going forward, you can see the light uh, purple bars represent that same amount of base savings that's being achieved with the compute savings plans that were deployed. But on top of that, our service is able to safely deploy an additional layer um, of commitments that can be grown and squashed to follow their usage patterns up and down. And the way as our algorithms get smarter, as the um, commitments that we're deploying uh, mature and become more and more flexible, you can see there the incremental uh, flex saving shown in green is ramping up and increasing to where um, over uh, or after 12 months, the effective savings rate has grown from 10% up to 20%. And then uh, over time, our service is able to achieve even higher uh, discounts and higher savings to where in sort of the, uh, the, the fullness of time in the end state of our service, uh, we can help them achieve a a uh, 39% effective savings rate. And so again, roughly we're trying to hit that 40% uh, mark, um, which would deliver to them in that scenario, if we quantify the savings, an incremental $2.4 million of annualized savings, while at the same time um, reducing their commitment risk. And so uh, AI ops can have a material impact uh, on the savings generated. And uh, in this case, by the way, uh, when we measure effective savings rate post our service, we're doing it uh, after our saving share charge has been applied. And so these are not gross effective savings rate numbers. These are net effective savings rate numbers, meaning that $2.4 million is completely incremental. It all goes back uh, to the cloud budget of this customer, which they can use to you know, deploy more things, hire people, increase margins, um, et cetera. And so this is the power uh, of AI ops being brought to bear um, for cloud cost optimization. Uh, if this is of any interest to you, if you want to understand uh, and quantify uh, how much can a service like Prosper Ops deliver in terms of incremental savings, in terms of uh, de-risking your um, commitment. Uh, there's a few um, options that you have in terms of taking next steps. The first is just reach out to us um, at hello at prosperops.com and we can schedule uh, a time to, um, to chat and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, as I mentioned, the sort of first step in any sort of engagement is to run a complimentary savings analysis uh, the way that works is we take a very, very least privileged, small permission uh, in your environment to be able to ingest uh, cost and usage data only. That allows us to uh, process that, again, run our algorithms against it to sort of understand what, uh, what our service can do uh, in your environment. Um, it, it's very quick for you to set up that permission. It's a, it's a single IAM permission. It takes five minutes to set up. Um, our service generates that analysis and then we review it with you, which takes about 45 minutes. Uh, the report is yours to keep whether you choose to proceed or not. And um, our, our goal with that is to give you data to help you understand the potential and to make an informed decision. Um, also, if you're interested in just kind of tracking our progress, 
um, over time. You can uh, head over to prosperops.com and sort of sign up there just to be a part of our um, our, our newsletters. Uh, so with that, uh, we appreciate your time today. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in chat. Uh, wait a second just to see if there are any that come in. Doesn't look like it. So if you have questions, uh, go ahead and again, Feel free to reach out to us. But with that, that concludes our webinar today. Um, appreciate your time. And um, we hope you better understand how AI ops can be leveraged to um, increase and impact your cloud cost optimization efforts. Thank you.